So governments all over the world are responding to the COVID-19 coronavirus by saying that they need to set up massive funds to protect businesses, including the banks. Now, if COVID-19 acts as a trigger for a recession and the government says they have to put more liquidity into the banks and we face bank bailout number two, will you rise up and stop them? <laughs> In a way, whether it's our underfunded health services, for profit farming, or the role of big pharma profiteering off a potential vaccine, the COVID-19 crisis has condemned the system we live under. In 2018, during a meeting of the World Health Organization in Geneva, a group of experts coined the phrase disease X. They said that for profit farming, the intensive mass farming with loads of different animals herded together in filthy conditions. Eventually, this would give rise to disease X. They said that this disease X would spread all around the world through trade networks following the flow of profits and the flow of people that follows the flow of profits. We'll look at the map of the spread of COVID-19. It breaks out in China and then quickly spreads to some of the richest parts of the world, traveling along trade networks. So two years ago, the World Health Organization was already warning that the way we live would lead to the outbreak of such a disease. So this disease arose because of the system we live under. And when people start dying, it will be because of how this system has treated public health services. Look at Italy, over 46,000 healthcare jobs were cut over the last few years. They lost 70,000 hospital beds during the years of austerity. Ireland is similar. Look what Mary Harney, Leo Varadkar, Michal Martin and Simon Harris, all the health ministers over the last 20 years have intentionally run down public health in order to drive people into the arms of private health providers like Dennis O'Brien who owns the Beacon Hospital. And so when the government turns around and goes, oh, we have a lack of ICU beds. You did it. And so, like in Italy, they've now to choose between who gets the intensive care unit beds, who dies and who lives. And when we have to start making those stark choices, those choices are only imposed on us in the first place because of the likes of Simon Harris and Mary Harney. From 2008 to 2014 alone, they cut 2.7 billion from the health budget. And do you wonder why we have a trolley crisis? Now when your grandmother or a relative with cancer catches COVID-19 and they turn around and tell you that there's no ICU bed available for them because they're already taken up. Remember, it's a system that puts people after the interests of the profiteers that has done this. And while we're looking for more funds for health services and more ICU beds, the people at the top of society and the politicians are talking about more funds for businesses. Our government announced a package of 200 million in loans available to businesses. Or there's another 200 million available to Enterprise Ireland. But surely we should prioritise getting any funds we have into the health service. And when the economy lurches further downwards, they'll be arguing to bail out the banks. And what a condemnation of the system. When you think about the fact that the EU bans state spending on things like social housing or the health service. And now that COVID-19 has come along, they've lifted their ban on state spending because it's stupid in the face of a crisis like this. Banning states from spending on ICU beds. Although they've probably lifted the ban on state spending so the state can spend lots of money creating funds for businesses. But it just goes to show how cynical the people in power are. And this is typified by the likes of Boris Johnson. The British ruling class have decided to just not test people, to not have mass tracking, to not close down gatherings like Cheltenham, talking about herd immunity, meaning they're just gonna let people die. And the big pharma companies are licking their lips and salivating at the prospect of making a fortune in taxpayers' money from developing a vaccine. Inovio Pharmaceuticals, for example, just one of the pharma companies. This company has existed for four decades and has never manufactured an approved product. But they've already made 208 million from saying that they might develop a coronavirus vaccine. 
and these companies are getting government taxpayer support. The US National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease Research is pouring millions into these companies. So the taxpayer will pay for the research to get the vaccine and then will pay again when the vaccine is developed. Massive corporation Johnson & Johnson, their research is backed up by the US Biomedical and Advanced Research Authority. Where is the international coordinated medical response to this funded by states to produce a vaccine owned by states? Welcome to capitalism. Dog eat dog and we all go down the tubes together. Pharmaceutical companies view COVID-19 as a once in a lifetime profit opportunity. The worse the crisis gets, the more taxpayers will be on their knees begging for a vaccine. And the big pharma companies spend millions on lobbying and buying politicians. In the US they spend 295 million on lobbying. And the EU isn't exempt. 40 million a year is spent on lobbying in the EU. So these big corporations have captured the politicians and put them in their back pocket. So whether it's intensive, profit-driven farming that leads to the growth of more diseases, whether it's the fact that health services the world over have been destroyed by neoliberal right-wing outsourcing and privatisation policies, whether it's the fact that they'll create funds for business and bail out the banks again rather than creating funds for workers, for those in rent arrears, for those in mortgage arrears, for workers who might lose their jobs because of this crisis, or to pour more funds into our health service, or whether it's the fact that our state has been captured by big corporations, vulture funds, by big farming, and that our governments act in their interests and not ours. For all those reasons and more, we need a rebellion, and we need to replace this rotten system. We need a system where the working class is in the driving seat, where the people who create all the wealth in society have a say in what's done with that wealth. That's called socialism and it's worth fighting for.